Welcome to English Language Shelf. In this video, I will tell you about clauses. Generally speaking, a clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a verb. So basically, it is a kind of a sentence, but in some cases, it is a complete thought, but in other cases, it's not a complete thought. So you can see on the screen that we have some independent clause and three types of dependent clause which are also called subordinate clauses and principal clause, coordinate clause and non-finite clause. As always I will walk you through all of them one by one. So let's mind over English. First of all independent clause. Well this clause it can stand on its own and it actually gives you a meaningful sentence which kind of like looks like a regular sentence and if let's say you have two independent clauses and if you want to join them then you have to use coordinating conjunctions so-called fanboys and as I told earlier that this sentence or this clause independent clause it expresses one complete idea or thought for example, he is a wise man. It is one complete thought because we have subject, he is a verb, is verb, a wise, an adjective, but man. So it's actually complement. So subject plus verb plus complement is, is a linking verb. So subject plus linking verb plus complement or uh, predicate nominative. So it's one complete idea that okay there is a man, there is a there is a guy who is wise. Gosse was one of the greatest German poets. It's also one complete thought. Can you do it? Can you you I mean subject do verb it and it's an object. So it's asking you can you do something? So it's one thought that I have an idea I want to to ask you something about that but let's say you have two independent clauses I want to buy a phone but I don't have enough money so if I just stop at the first clause I want to buy a phone I stop here so yes it's a complete thought because we have subject I want a verb to buy a phone so it's an object but uh, after the uh, conjunction but there is another thought I don't have enough money subject plus verb plus uh, object so therefore this two thoughts are joined by using coordinating conjunctions same is the case with he went to London and visited his grandparents two thoughts that okay he went to London and another thing that what did he do there he met his grandparents for the last sentence George smiles whenever he sees his mother George smiles this is a clause because there is subject plus verb but if I say whenever he sees his mother if I don't read the first two words if I don't read George smiles and I just say Whenever he sees his mother, now this doesn't complete a thought. So this is actually called dependent clause. Now what is a dependent clause? Let's move there. Dependent clause or subordinate clause, it basically is a clause which does not complete a thought. The idea or a thought is incomplete, it is unfinished. Therefore, it cannot form a complete sentence. For example, when I was dating Dinah, I had an accident. The first clause, when I was dating Dinah, the underlined. If I stop here, when I was dating Dinah, if I stop here, so I obviously will have that signal in my mind that okay, it is something which is not complete. There is something missing. But if I go with the second clause, if I don't read the underlined and I say I had an accident 
well that is a complete thought so the second clause is a is an independent clause but the first is dependent clause similarly Goethe is known as one of the greatest German poets because his style has been widely imitated again the underlined are all dependent clauses if you want to figure out that okay whether it's a dependent clause or independent clause just you know divide the sentence into two clauses if there is a comma you can figure it out yourself that okay uh, there are two ideas or perhaps only one idea but the second idea is un uh, is incomplete so you can figure it out that way next up adjective clause this is also a dependent clause which uh, which is functions as an adjective it is also called relative clause and therefore it modifies a noun and a pronoun so if you want to introduce an adjective clause so you have to use a relative pronoun and which relative pronouns who whom which whose and that these are the five relative pronouns that uh, you have to use one two three four five yeah for example one song that we like became our theme song so the underline that we like so there is a song okay so song it's a noun but it also you know gives an elaboration that okay it is a song which we liked so that is something which became our theme song it is not something okay which we didn't like or which was suggested by someone else and that is why it became our theme song so i mean the underlined over here adjective so it basically you know describes or modifies it tells you it slightly elaborates about the subject similarly the candidate whom we selected promised to serve us well so which candidate well it identifies the candidate whom we selected so that is why the underlined whom we selected is an uh, is an adjective clause james is asking for the shoes which used to belong to his dad so it's a particular shoe which is being described that okay a particular shoe which james father used to wear or belonged to him that is what james is asking for so this is an adjective clause a second dependent clause is adverbial clause adverbial clause basically it functions as an adverb which in other word means that it modifies or describes a verb an adjective or another adverb for example uh, uh, well basically you have to introduce this adverbial clause by using subordinating conjunction subordinate conjunction they tell you about you know time they tell you about place they tell you about purpose they tell you about manner cause condition and comparison so if you want to know more about subordinate conjunction then you can refer to one of my lecture on conjunctions which you will find on my youtube channel let's look at some examples when we need you we will call you so now over here the underlined it is a it is an adverbial clause why because the word need which is italicized it's a verb so therefore it modifies a verb therefore we say we will call you i'll stay here where there is shelter from the rain well here the italicized word here it is an adverb of place so another adverb in other words mean adverb of place in this case it's adverb of place so therefore the word where it modifies adverb of place or another adverb so therefore uh, the underlined is adverbial clause actually it should be complete where there is shelter from the rain that is complete adverbial clause roman felt better than he had felt in days the word italicized is better which is an adjective which is being modified and the underlined therefore becomes adverbial clause so you can also figure it out you know when we need you there is a condition when we need you it's a condition 
I'll stay here where there is shelter from the rain. So it's um, you can say uh, 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 perhaps condition that uh, I'll stay here where there is shelter from the rain. Actually, it tells you uh, a cause, not condition, a cause. Because it tells you the reason that why you want to stay there. Roman felt better than he had felt in days. This is comparison. So this is how adverbial clause can be figured. The third dependent clause is noun clause. Noun clause basically is a dependent clause which is used as a noun. And this clause can be the subject of a sentence or it can be a direct object or an indirect object or a predicate nominative which also is called subject complement or it can be an object of preposition so you have to introduce noun clause by using pronouns or subordinating conjunctions but which pronouns and which subordinating conjunctions they have been shown in the brackets so let's look at some examples. I like what I hear. Now, if you want to figure out, okay, whether this underlined is a noun clause, you have to substitute either the word something or the word someone. And based on that, if you are able to make sense, if it gives you a complete thought or if it, it still fits, then you can say that it is a noun clause. For example, I like what I hear. Let's substitute it. I like something. Yeah, it fits. So therefore, the underlined is a noun clause, which is functioning as a direct object. I know whose woods are these. Let's substitute it. I know something. Yes, it fits. It makes sense. So therefore, whose woods is a noun clause which functions as indirect object. Give a copy to whoever wants one. Let's cross check. Give a copy to someone, something, not something, but someone, yes, it fits. The word someone fits, so therefore, whoever wants one is a noun clause functioning as an object of preposition because the word to, it's a preposition and after that, there is object of preposition. That is the house for sale. So, something for sale. Yes, it fits. So, that is the house. It's a noun clause functioning as a subject. So, this is how you will figure out that uh, whether it's a noun clause or uh, it's uh, a, a, it's not a noun clause or it's adverbial clause. This is how it works. Then we have principal clause. Principal clause basically you can see on the screen that the formula for principal clause is subject plus finite verb plus object. Now what is a finite verb? Finite verb basically the root or stem verb, the root word which actually is a verb and that verb can be uh, made into 12 tenses. We can make the past tense, we can make uh, the present participle, we can make the present continuous, the 12 tenses. So this is what principal clause is. In some cases principal clause uh, can be a dependent clause or independent clause but if you want to be specific then mostly the principal clause are often often uh, independent clause let's look at some examples i know that boy it's an independent clause as well as principal clause but you see how to know that it is a principal clause because of the word finite verb there are many types of verbs which you can refer to my lecture on verbs which you will find on my youtube channel so there are many types of verbs but instead of main verb we are focusing on finite verb so finite verb 
you have to see no is there any root word of no absolutely not the word no itself is a root or stem word so therefore it's a finite verb she baked a cake for him the word baked is a finite verb I, actually it's a past tense but if it's a past tense then basically it has a root word so that is bake without d so with this sense with this idea you will understand or you should know that okay it's a past tense and therefore finite verbs they have this potential that they can be transformed into past tense or present continuous or present participle or past participle etc similarly he can jog every morning jog it's a finite verb what about the two last the last two you hanged up my call while i was still talking the word hang finite verb hanged what so you subject hanged finite verb up my call this is an object while i subject was it's a finite verb because the root word of was is be the root word of was is be and the past form of be is was i was so subject plus finite verb plus still talking so object similarly in the case of last the inspector knew about the hidden truth the inspector subject knew now this is the past form of the root word no so finite verb plus about the hidden truth this is object but it was the judge who passed a false judgment it subject was finite verb but because it's a root uh, it's the past form of the root word be it was the judge object the judge who passed a false judgment so object now basically you can find principal clause in a complex sentence as well as in a compound sentence what is a complex and compound sentence i will tell you in another lecture of uh, uh, sentence structure stepping forward we have coordinate clause coordinate clause uh, actually when you have two or more similarly important independent clauses which are joined by coordinate conjunction and those two independent clauses actually when joined by a uh, coordinating conjunctions they they form a compound sentence this is what coordinate clause is so basically you can see the example i was meaning to leave soon for i was getting late to the next class now this sentence we have two clauses independent clauses the underlined are two independent clauses but considering them as one unit we will say that okay this is one complete compound sentence and therefore in this compound sentence we have two coordinate clauses why because the first clause first independent clause tells you something about the second independent clause i was meaning to leave soon why for i was getting late to the next class similarly harry left for home in a rush and i was worried about him harry left for home in a rush okay so what and i was worried about him okay so actually there there is a co coordination because it tells you that something made you worried about him why because he left your home in a rush perhaps in emergency urgently so this is what coordinate clause is they weren't up for athletics nor was i so two two ideas they weren't up for athletics let's say your friends were not ready for athletics and on the other hand i was also not 
So basically, either this means that I am not ready because my friends are not ready. So that's what I can figure it out. So this is how coordinate clause, you know, they work. Basically, compound sentences, two independent clauses, when joined by coordinating conjunction, form a compound sentence. And in that compound sentence, we say that the first independent clause and second independent clause, they both are considered as coordinate clause. Now, stepping up the cliff a bit further, we have the last one, non Fin, non finite clause, non finite clause. Non finite clause, basically, you can see there are two types. One is the participle, and the other is infinite verb. So, basically, this clause contains a participle or an infinite verb that makes the subject and verb evident. Even though the subject or the subject may be hidden, but still. Uh, you can figure it out, okay, that there is a subject. The participle, they are often used as part of verb phrase. So it can be used as a verbal that functions as an adjective. So there are present participle and past, past, past participle. Whereas infinitive verb, they are verbals usually preceded by two that functions as a noun an adjective or an adverb so now i will take you side by side you see the first participle hearing the fire alarm the residents came out of the building so the bold one is a participle because there is present participle hearing ing present participle but what about if i want to tell you with the same idea, I made an infinitive verb sentence. For example, the owners have to evacuate their apartments. Now, the owners have to evacuate. The bold is infinitive verb, but the underlined, it is a direct object. Over here, it's functioning as a noun. The infinitive verb, the bold one, it's functioning as a noun and the underlined, it's a direct object. Similarly, she saw a man standing on the edge of his window. So she saw a man, okay. But which man? A man, uh, a man that was standing on the edge of his window. So it's also an uh, adjective. It is functioning as an adjective because it tells you about a specific man, okay? A man who is standing on the edge of his window. But what about if I make the infinitive of this same idea? So I made to suicide was his hopelessness. So you can see to suicide, it's an infinitive verb, which actually is a noun and a subject. So to suicide was his hopelessness. The third one, did you see a man with a black jacket and a cap? See a man with a black jacket and a cap. This is part, uh, a participle because it's simply, did you see, see a man with a black jacket and a cap? This is participle. Now, the infinitive uh, verb I, I made, our task is, to find that thief. Our task is, what is our task? To find that thief. So, to find, it's a noun, and which also the underlined is a predicate nominative. So, basically, if you want to know whether infinitive verb is a noun or not, so there are three things. You have to see whether that infinitive verb is taking the place of a subject or is it taking the place of direct object or is it taking the place of predicate nominative if the infinitive verb fills any one of the three uh, things either direct object or subject or predicate nominative then it is a noun but you can see the last two that 
the day he spoiled my painting, I started to hate him. So this is actually I started started verb to hate. So this is actually adverb because adverb is a word that modifies or describes a verb. So therefore, to hate it's an adverb and it is predicate nominative. Similarly, last one, my grandmother has a sweater to knit. Sweater, it's a noun and to knit it becomes adjective because it describes or modifies the noun sweater. So fun the infinitive to knit functions as a noun and it fills the place of predicate nominative. Why adverb and adjectives can never be subject or direct object? It's because adverbs and adjectives they describe or modify they answer the questions uh, you can refer to uh, my lecture on adjectives and adverbs adjectives they tell you the uh, they tell you the answer of questions what kind how many how much and adverbs they tell you about where when how and to what extent but the direct object it tells you to what or to whom the subject obviously I mean it's the subject so subject what is a subject like any person or a thing which does an action and predicate nominative obviously a phrase which describes or identifies the subject so that is why adverb and adjectives can never fill the place of direct object and subject. However, they can only fill the space of predicate nominative. So this is all about non-finite clause. Uh, yeah, so that's all friends. Next up, I will tell you about sentence structure and function. So guys, if you like this lecture, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon, give it a like. If you have any questions or doubts, you can leave your words in the comment section and forward this lecture to your friends and family, my channel, English Language Shelf. So waiting to see you in my next, uh, next lecture. Take care and goodbye.